Hello friends, Chris here at CaribbeanPod.com, your wicked chef. Today we're doing a little curry, a little vegetarian something. I just got back from the Asian store and look what I found. They call it Chinese okra. This is all cut up into pieces. Typically it's long, maybe two feet in length. In the Caribbean, we know it as jingi. You guys may know this in a different form as well. Some of you may be using this in the dried form. When it's dry, you use it as a loofah to, 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 to bath with and then to scrub your skin. I remember my mom using it to wash dishes. Yeah, mom's was a little school, man. So Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com, as I said, we're gonna make curry jingi, Chinese okra, with some potato. So here we go. First thing we've got to do is to prep the, uh, the jingi. So all I would do is, in this case, it's already chopped um, from its full length. I would just remove the sort of exposed ends, because that's already going discolored. And using a sharp paring knife, you would just remove the skin you could probably use a uh, potato peeler here, but because of the ridges here, I think you may get more work out of using that um, potato peeler. And that's that simple. All you do, you remove the skin. You're gonna rinse this off in cool water, and then you're gonna chop it up into maybe half, uh, maybe one centimeter pieces or bigger, maybe. Uh, for those of you not using metric, it'll be probably about half an inch or so would be good. Got a saucepan here on high heat. I'm just going to hit it with two tablespoons of vegetable oil. And since the pan is already hot, the oil temperature will be exactly where I want it. So in goes one small onion that I diced up finely, as well as two three cloves of garlic. I'm just going to turn my heat down to low now because I want this to sweat and to release all that lovely flavor from the garlic as well as the onion. After about three minutes on that low heat, you'll notice the edges of the onion and the garlic starts to go brown. So we're going to do a couple things here now. I've got here a quarter of a scotch bonnet pepper that I cut up. If you're going to be handling those as I just did, remember to wash your hands with soap and water directly after. Well, that's just the, it's given. You're handling hot peppers, wash your hands, wear gloves. And right away, a heaping tablespoon, my heat is still on low, a heaping tablespoon, tablespoon of curry powder. What we're doing here, pretty much toasting the curry so it releases all the ingredients, all those different spices which makes up this curry powder. And this curry powder is a blend out of the Caribbean mimicking a Madras blend. So it's a Madras curry powder. Give that about two minutes, low heat, and then we'll move on. It's now time, we've toasted the curry, now it's time to cook it a little. That's about two and a half to three tablespoons of water. And we're just gonna move that around. We want to cook that raw curry taste out of this curry. The last thing you want is eating this dish when it's done and you're getting that raw, pungent sort of curry taste. Let that go for about three minutes until all the liquid has evaporated. And then we will add the chopped up jingi, the Chinese okra. Um, I've got two pounds that I peeled and trimmed here. Um, cut up into small pieces, that's going to go in there. Uh, you'll also need two potatoes cut up into cubes as well. You will notice the sort of curry base that we made here is going to start going, uh, three things you're going to notice. It's going to start going darker in color, it's going to start going grainy or clumped together, and it's going to start remaining on the bottom of the pan. This is exactly what we want. I'm just going to turn up my heat now to high, and in goes all that lovely jingy in there. You can already hear that nice little sizzle going on. Give that a quick stir to sort of deglaze the bottom of this pan. It's gonna start picking up all those lovely color from the curry. In goes a half a teaspoon of salt, as well as some fresh ground black pepper. Maybe about a quarter teaspoon or so. Maybe less. The 
chopped up potato. Remember, those are two small potatoes that we chopped up. And the final thing in there, remember your heat is still on high, is one cup of water. Give that a quick stir, bring it up to a boil, and then put the lid on there, reduce it to a, gent well, a simmer, and let it go for about 25 minutes. Just wanna quickly show you guys where we at. It's been going out for about five minutes. I've got a simmer going on, the potato's gonna go tender, but we wanna try and keep the shape of it. And there's still quite a bit of liquid because the okra or the jingi has sprung its own natural juices. So with your heat on uh, low medium, you want to leave the pot slightly ajar here so we, the, some of that liquid is going to evaporate because we don't want this overly soggy. It's been about 25 minutes. It's going to start thickening up. The potato is nice and tender. Here is where you're going to personalize this dish. If you want it a little bit runny, so if you're eating this with rice or roti or bread or hey, even a pita bread would be good with this, what you would do is a little bit of sauce in there would be nice. The other thing you got to consider is when it cools, it will go thicker. Taste for salt if it's where you want it to be. I'm going to say you can always add more salt if you want. I know this is going to thicken up as it cools. I'm going to turn my stove off now and that is done. Remember, if there's too much liquid, remove the, heat, remove the lid, turn up the heat and let that excess liquid burn off. Got one final tip for you guys. If you guys want to add some extra flavor, when it's when you turn the heat off, get some shadow benny, chop it up finely, and top it with this. If you can't get shadow benny or culantro, get some cilantro. A couple tablespoons chopped up finely because the cilantro will not be as powerful as the shadow benny or chardon benny. Um, Top it there, put the lid back on it, and let that sit for a few minutes. The oils are going to add a next, a new, another level of flavor here to this dish. The curry jingi or Chinese okra, as it may also be called, is all done now, ready to serve rice, roti, bread. It's good to go. It's a lovely vegetarian dish, as I said before. All the ingredients that I used today and the equal amounts will be posted down in the description of this video or you can check out caribbeanpot.com for the entire recipe step-by-step -step pictures and everything else remember guys it's always a pleasure to have you here in the kitchen with me a lovely vegetarian dish curry jingy you're gonna love it give it a try